If you're suffering with sacroiliac joint dysfunction that could present radiating low back pain or even mimic sciatic symptoms, then check out these five exercises that might help bring you some relief. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today I'm going to take you through five exercises for the relief of pain from sacroiliac or SI joint dysfunction. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice and exercises each week to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. So SI joint dysfunction either means that the sacroiliac joint is unstable, so causing problems because the muscles aren't strong enough, or it's stuck in a position not allowing for movement, so causing problems because of a lack in mobility. This dysfunction could be as a result of pregnancy, in women of course, a traumatic impact injury to the legs, previous surgery such as spinal fusion, uneven leg length, or even activities that place repeated stress on the joint, which can also be prolonged positions of sitting or standing. The SI joints are found between the sacrum of the spine in the lower back and the iliac crest or ilium bone of the pelvis. These joints do provide a very small and limited amount of movement and can be located where you see two dimples in the lower back either side of the spine. When they get stiff or are unstable, they begin to cause pain away from that point in the lower back and sometimes cause radiating pain into the groin, the bottom or down the leg, but only as far as the knee. So to alleviate this pain, we can either do some mobility exercises to free the joint up or strength exercises to help stabilize them. Now, because it's likely you will have this problem on one side, but maybe both, just be cautious to start out with as you don't want to do any of these exercises if they cause further pain or make your symptoms worse. If you get a popping feeling with some of these, that's okay, but if you get increased pain, then stop straight away. I will be using some aids to help with the exercises, and these may be items that you already have, but if not, I will give you alternatives where required. Right, let's go through them. Right, the first three exercises we're gonna do out of the five are gonna be isometric, so that basically means there's no movement, but there will be a contraction of the muscles. So you just need to find yourself led down either on the floor like I'm doing here, you can do this on a bed, you can do this on a sofa. You might wanna have something behind your head and your neck just to support you while you're doing the exercise. But basically from there, I'm gonna bring my feet off the ground so my knees are bent at 90 degrees and the knees are directly over the top of the hips. And I want the knees to be about hip distance wide. From there, the, I'm trying to initiate a movement as I'm trying to push this leg forwards at the same time bringing this knee back towards me. But because there's no movement involved, it's isometric. I'm going to resist it using my hands. So I'm going to place one hand on the top of this knee, the other hand around the back of the leg of the other one, and then from there I'm going to push into the hands with both legs. So I'm driving the left knee in, back up towards me into the hand, at the same time pushing the right leg forwards into the hand. I'm going to hold that contraction for a count of five, and then I relax, and then I switch the hands over, so I can then do it the opposite way. So this time the right knee's coming up towards me as I'm trying to push the left one forwards. So I contract, pushing into the hands for five seconds and then relax and then I repeat. So the idea is that we do a five second contraction and then relax and then we switch sides, five second contraction and then relax. And I would suggest that you repeat this five times on each side. Just you might find you feel some popping going on into the lower part of the back and that's perfectly normal. But if you're getting any pain from it, then obviously you shouldn't be doing this one. So that's the first one. Let's go on to the next one. Right, the next exercise is basically gonna be trying to draw the knees in towards each other. So I'm trying to pinch an object between the, between the knees. So I'm gonna use the basketball here. If you don't have a basketball or a firm ball that you've got at home, then you can use something like a pillow just folded up so it's relatively firm because what we don't want is we don't want too much movement. A little bit of movement's okay, but we don't want too much movement when you're actually making the isometric contraction. So I'm gonna place the ball in between the knees. I've got my feet flat on the floor. Again, I'm gonna relax the head back. And again, you won't see much movement with this one. That's the idea, because I'm just gonna contract the muscles by drawing the knees in towards each other. So I'm trying to squeeze the ball. It's a five second contraction like we did with the first exercise. 
and then you relax and then we go again so we squeeze the knees in squeezing the ball or whatever object you've got between your knees five second hold and then relax again like we did with the first exercise you might want to do it five times before you then move on to the next one so let's go on to the third one right the third exercise is basically the opposite of the second one so this time we're going to try and draw the knees apart so you do need something to stop you from allowing your knees to go out wide. So I'm using a really strong therapy band that I've wrapped around a couple of times around my legs and I've got it really, really tight. So basically it's so firm that I can hardly move it at all. If you don't have a therapy band, you can just use like a belt and just tie the belt around the, around the knees, around the top of the legs, just to keep it tight. So again, there's no movement involved when you do the isometric contraction. So same position as the last one, you're gonna lie yourself down. You should have your knees a hip distance wide with the feet flat on the floor. And then the aim from there then is just, just trying to draw the knees outward. So I'm pushing the knees out against the band. I can feel some stimulation around the side of the hips for this one and then relax. Again, it's five second hold. So then I go again, squeeze the knees outwards, five second hold and then relax and so on until you've done five times for this particular one like we've done with the previous two and then you move on to the next one which we'll go on to that now okay the fourth exercise is where we're going to start to initiate some movement uh, but we need to do it in a very slow and controlled manner so it's going to be a modified dead bug which is basically a movement where you move your legs and your arms together but we're just going to do the leg movement on its own to start off with you want your knees Again, bent at right angles so they're over the top of the hips. You can just relax your hands down on the floor and there should be a little bit of a natural curve in the lower part of your back. So you might have a little bit of a gap underneath the lumbar part of the spine. You wanna try and maintain that while you're doing the movement with the legs because as you start to take a leg forwards, it might feel like it's gonna try and arch up. So utilize your core muscles, these lower abdominal muscles, to try and keep the spine stabilized while you're doing the movement with the leg. So the movement from there then is I'm just gonna start off with one leg to slowly draw it forwards, making sure that everything here stays dead still until you've pretty much got your leg out straight and then you draw it back in until you're back to the start position and then do the opposite side. So I'm allowing the left leg now just to start to drop down towards the floor. This one's staying still. I'm focused on keeping this nice and tight. I can feel a lot of tension going on, particularly on that one side as the leg is going forwards. But I'm trying to have to keep everything nice and stable as I'm doing the movement. So on this particular one, we do five slowly, alternating between each leg, so five on each side, before we then move on to the last exercise. Let's go on to that now. Right, the last exercise is done standing, and this is basically a hip hitch, where we're trying to get a pelvis to actually lift up on one side. So for this one, both legs need to remain straight while you're doing the exercise, so we don't want the actual knees to bend, so make sure the legs stay straight. On the side that you want to work, what I want you to do is take that one foot slightly further forwards. So you've got the heel of that foot in line with the toes of the support leg. So again, making sure you're up nice and tall. And the movement from there is I'm going to try and lift this leg up off the floor, hitching up the hip so I can work on this one side and then lower it back down. Now, you might feel this in the opposite hip because this is obviously weight bearing. So I'm going to be stimulating a lot of the muscles on this side as well as I'm working around the waist and the lower part of the back on this side. You're gonna do five slow hip hitches with the foot slightly further set forwards. And then after you've done five that way, slide the foot back so the toes of that foot now are in line with the heel of the foot. And again, perform exactly the same, but now you're hitching the hip with it slightly in a different position. And you might feel that a little bit into the lower part of the back as you come up. That should feel a little bit more restrictive on that side when you've got the foot further set back. So five slow with the foot to the front, five slow with the foot to the back, and then you obviously then switch sides to do the same on the opposite leg. Okay, if you want to try and increase the range of movement, you can actually do this exercise on the step where you've got your support leg on the step, and then the other leg then drops a little bit lower down towards the ground before you lift it back up again, if you want to increase your range of movement. But I would suggest starting on the floor is a good start point just so you can limit the range of movement. You can do these exercises that specifically help you every day to help manage your pain and symptoms. And hopefully over time, the inflammation will reduce as you bring a better balance back to the joint. 
You can also do some core exercises to strengthen the spine and I'll leave some links in the description below to some other videos I've done on this channel that might also help. I hope you can take something away from this video today. If so, please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below and share this video with friends to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching and remember to stay active, keep moving and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.